we've got lots of tech stuff to talk about because that's the other reason you guys come here is for tech stuff. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. George's tech update, a little bit of explanation about stuff, some really good questions and more. Two men, twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. And we're back. And it's VoiceOver Body Shop. We've flipped things around here a little bit. And now we're going to do the tech part. Second. I like it. I know. I like it because I really lo I love starting with the guests to get the energy up, up in the studio for the guests. And right. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun. Right. So we, we've got lots of stuff to talk about. A couple of great questions uh, from our audience. Let's start off with your tech update. What's, what's up in the world of voiceover oh, yeah. tech? Well, I mean, the thing that's been, you know, the newest thing in our world really that's had any consequence is the new computers from Apple mm -hmm. and the, uh, the new, uh, Mac mini is the one that i was really excited about well people are starting to buy them now and um i'm finding out that it is legit it, it works it, well it, it works well and there was a lot of concern about i'm seeing my notes on here so i'm just going to wing it there's a lot of concern about the um performance of the new mac mini as well as the new uh, macbook air because the macbook air has arguably pretty low-end specs mm -hmm. um you know the low end the macbook air is like they say it's like a, a like a low power chip. It's a very low class level chip. But I'm telling you, even the MacBook Air with its low end spec, it's so snappy and responsive that it's not going to feel sluggish to you. The people you are the people are probably not going to want to go run out and buy a MacBook Air. Are people who are trying to do a lot of 4K video editing. You know, you got a new action cam GoPro 4K or. Um, I've been playing around with the Osmo Pocket. It yeah, it's four K. Yeah, and like the little, little thing, the thing it turns around. It looks and... like a chicken head. <laughs> you can move it around. The head's always like mm -hmm. um, all those things. It, you need a you need a bit more horsepower for doing that kind of work. But for the vast majority of what you're doing, especially voiceover actors, these machines are all fantastic. They're they're snappy. Um, the Mac Mini is a six core processor, so that means that you can multitask like crazy. You can have Chrome with 25 tabs open going on. You can have right. your your recording software going. Everything can be running simultaneously. It's Especially someone choke. like you who loves to have all those tabs open. I tend to be a bit of a power user, <laughs> and it, it handles all that stuff no problem. Um, again, the Mac Mini is not a graphics powerhouse either. Like, if you want the most all-round computer, you're going to be dabbling in YouTube. You want to be shooting 4K stuff. Maybe that's something maybe you want to look at a macbook pro or the imac there's also the imac pro that came out about a year ago that is like a crazy tier higher than almost anybody needs i mean that thing is a monster i think the low-end imac pro is 10 cores 
Mm-hmm. And you can get it up to 18 ten cores. Co- what do you need That's a computer cores a for? Crap load of processing power. I mean, if you're doing like models of global warming and. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. If you're trying I, to Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin yeah. mine, you know, maybe that's what you need all that for, <laughs> but we don't need that stuff. Um, now if you get a Mac mini and you find that the, the video performance on it ends up being, uh, a weak point for you, which I don't think that's possible because the new Mac mini can drive two 4k monitors i mean if you got one 4k monitor you're kicking butt if you got two you are a serious power user um and it can drive them no problem but it also can take an external e what they call an e gpu external graphics processor unit so imagine getting a a video card that costs oh god i don't know three four hundred dollars right shoving it in a little box and putting it next to your mac and then plugging your your computer your monitors into that because you want to now drive four 4K monitors or something crazy like that. You can do that with a Mac Mini now. You can plug external graphics into it and make it into a mega powerful machine. In fact, it's so powerful now that if you get the higher end version, it's better than the Mac Pro was. That trash can one, you know, that little the one that looks like right. Well, it looks like a trash can. Yeah. Um, it's they're really quite amazing. Now, there's been a lot of concern, of course, about Mojave. Of course, it's the new operating system. Every year we have a new one. Every year we tell you not to upgrade. On you know, Over and over, we do the same thing. But Mojave has been proven to be pretty darn pain-free for the most part. The only problem I've had so far personally with Mojave is installing a new installation of the Apollo system. And again, not a lot of you need the Apollo. That's something for... Doing producers. source connect if sessions. If you're doing commercials, if you yeah. are like, I mean, if you're producing commercials and multi-tracking and yeah. recording music and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the tools that are in the Apollo really make a difference for people doing um, source elements, source connect type sessions or ISDN sessions. Things where they are recording you live and you want to give them the best version that, of you that you can. The cleanest noise floor. You want to have all this processing. You can do that with these tools. Um, a lot of you, if you if you're lucky enough to have a pristinely quiet studio like this one, um, you need very minimal processing tools. But many many of you are going to be relying on those kind of tools to get that stuff done. Yeah. So um, yeah, so Mojave, I think is okay. I'm still going to say don't upgrade unless you absolutely need to. Don't upgrade unless it's it's something you feel like it it allows you to run a tool that's going to improve your productivity make you feel a lot more like you're, you know, going to be able to get your work done faster. This this 2013 old MacBook, it's running Mojave without any problem. Yeah. I mean, as long as the machine's qualified to run it, you should be fine. I, I wouldn't install it on a really low-end computer. Maybe right. if you only have four gigs of memory, eh, maybe not. I, Something with a little yeah. more memory and it should run it much better, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to throw it on my G5. It's just not yeah. going to happen. Yeah. On the Windows side side of things, there's not a whole lot of new exciting things in the world of Windows. I think the biggest thing with Windows is trying to avoid Windows upgrading its Itself, system yeah. when you don't want it to right. at the most inopportune time and then causing you a lot of problems. Um, I mean, Mac OS also has an auto upgrade feature, but you do actually have to I know auto update feature, but you have to turn it on and you can turn it off. Right. Um, Windows systems, unless I think you have the pro license, it tends to do updates automatically. So just be really, really careful. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much power in our machines these days. You just don't have to have the latest and greatest, but if you do, you got to have it. You know what? The latest and greatest thing that is powerful, that kind of blows my mind is the, is the iPad pro. I can't wait to try one. When the iPad yeah. Pro becomes a regular Mac yeah. and has like a file system with folders. Oh, cool. That thing is going to be sick. Like it is crazy powerful. Can't yeah. Wait. Right now it's still, no, well, it's still just an it's iPad with that. a lot of horsepower built into All right. it. A lot of cool stuff. Yeah. All I mean, right. the, in terms of uh, gear that I'm looking forward to this year, I'm thinking, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. With the DSP. We know how good we've done with predictions. Well, I ISDN, know. gone in two years. Yeah, we that always. was in 2010. I stopped, yeah, I stopped trying to predict <laughs> ISDN's demise. That's impossible. Um, but I'm predicting that this year we're going to have a microphone that can steer the pickup pattern towards your voice automatically. Because we have those cameras from Facebook. You know right. that Facebook, what's it called? The portal? I think that's what they call yeah. it. 
It's like a little ca- it's a little camera tablet you stick on your table. Oh, right, right. And as yeah, you walk yeah. around the room, it virtually follows you. Right. It doesn't just follow the the video doesn't just follow you. The audio follows you. The microphones steer themselves to point in the direction where you're standing. How do you do that? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And yeah. and actually the Amazon Echo Dot, a $40 little gadget does the same thing. Right. I can be in the shower a room away and yell echo and then have it play something right or Sorry, at least everybody. say i don't know i don't know that one <laughs> get that a lot <laughs> you can do that because the microphones steer and figure out where you are well i'm thinking that that's going to trickle into like the professional recording world mm-hmm. so you can put a mic up and have it be two three four feet away or have it right next to a piece of glass right and the mic will automatically focus on you i think that's what's coming for us because it's about time you know, all this technology goes into prosumer or, or well, like consumer stuff, but I'm waiting for it to trickle into professional microphones. And it's going to make it much easier for people to set up a studio. Cool. So I'm hoping that happens. All right. Well, speaking of setting up studios, mm-hmm. this place has gone through, I put it in a cocoon and it came out a butterfly. It uh, really has really become a much more usable space for yeah. what we do. And, and mostly because Eddie Furrier gave us this stand-up desk that raises and lowers, which is really nice. Uh, it has the world's most sensitive buttons. Yeah, you're like leaning. If you just suddenly touch it, goes it down with on anything, you and- <laughs> the desk goes up and down. It's pretty funny. Yeah, but, but it's uh, awesome. It's yeah, but such a, a nice piece. A lot went into doing this, and you were gone a lot, so I ended up doing all of this completely myself. The only, yeah. you know, and you know, the only person that really helped in really doing anything, yeah, is Lewis helped carry in the new couch. <laughs> I think it was a whole 40 second operation to, out of Because I know weeks. you, you would have tried to carry the couch in here I, by I yourself. I carried the corner piece in myself. Did you? Okay. Yeah. So we used to have this, there was, there was one couch. It was this, the napping couch in our porch in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was, it's L shaped and it was really nice, but only half of it fit on the patio here in LA. Mm-hmm. So we took, we bought a new one for the patio that fits better. Nice. And we took the rest of it. Got rid of my messy desk. If you've ever been in here, you know what a slob I am. And there you can, you can act. There's an actual shot of it right now. Uh, you that's can, what it looks like. And that's uh, you wave everybody. Yay! Yeah, John. There's a. Oh, sleeper. you can see the new beer. You can see the new beer keg too. Yeah, there's the new beer keg in the corner there, the right next to Sue. And cold beer on tap at all times. I know. You know, I'm going for the cold brew coffee uh, thing that goes in there. But. Nice. Uh, it, yeah, we can't change it. it. <laughs> We're stuck with it. Yeah. You can change it now. Oh, you can? Yeah. Oh, I guess it's time Isn't to it change. Isn't it going to break a bunch of stuff if we change no. it, though? I uh, changed mine. Uh, maybe All we'll right. try. Maybe we'll change it. That's the next thing. But it was a major effort, and now we're not in the corner over there. That's just my booth over there now. And, you know, we're just on this set, which... One is- set, camera stays locked. It's simpler to operate. It's and And the room's been dialed in acoustically as well. Dan put up a, a several more panels in the ceiling. It it sounds noticeably better. Yeah. And, and you had to do that because once you took all that stuff away from the other half of the room, right. that changes the way the room sounds. That's right? right. That's right. You know, even you know, and and that's a very important thing when you're when you're monitoring your sound as well. Because yeah. I've made you know, where Sue is working now, our technical director, is also my workstation. Yeah. And to go from the Mac to the, the Beast PC that we have running the show, right. all you have to do is flick a little button. Yeah. It just changes the model. Flick a switch and flop the keyboard That's around. Right. That's right. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's it's so much nicer. I now have a napping couch. My wife's like, you're never coming back in the house, are you? Like, well, <laughs> no, I got to come in the, to eat. We have know. a beer keg. Oh, there, there is the I mean, there's keg. a. Did I mention there's a beer keg? <laughs> yeah, but we. <laughs> we it looks like a coffee. Machine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it will be a coffee machine. But we've got a, a, a monitor up there that actually no cable. It has an antenna. I get all the big stations and PBS, so yeah. I can watch all the car chases. Uh, yeah, my wife walks in here. Like, the car chase on. She goes, yeah. All right, uh, that's what you're doing out here, watching car chases. Like, They're so compelling. <laughs> well, you are truly now a local. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's right. God, this guy's just driving along. How does he do that? Um, but uh, but I'm really happy with it. And then the coup de gras was this this cabinet we I, we bought because this desk was not wide enough to have both monitors and the stu- and the studio monitors, the speakers on there. Yep. So I said, got to find a 37 inch tall dresser or shelf or something that will support yeah. the speaker. Mm-hmm. 
And Marcy found one. Sure and enough. It, it was white. It's actually a baby drawer thing. She painted but, it in... No, I painted oh, it. Oh, you painted it in chalkboard material? Chalkboard paint. It's cool. So now it says tools, That's batteries. That's my crappy handwriting yeah, all yeah. over the phone. And then on the other side, it says homework, read chapter five, <laughs> answer questions <laughs> one through seven, and, <laughs> and just to remind me where I came from. Anyway, we got lots of tech questions coming up. If you've got a tech question, throw it in the chat room and uh, we'll answer it as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back with more voiceover body shop and lots of tech right after this. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Well, it's time to thank and talk about one of our wonderful sponsors here, that's Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. So it's a new year. You should probably have some new uh, levels of work in your sites. And to be able to kind of level up, you really need to have the right tools. One of those things is definitely going to be Source Connect. It's it's the software that allows you to re uh, connect to studios real time doing live sessions where they're recording you and you're just being a voice actor. That's the coolest thing about using a Source Connect session is you as the talent, once you're connected, you just get to act. You're not having to keep Pro Tools rolling and all this stuff. You just talk. The sound quality is fantastic. It's very, very reliable. They have great support all around the globe. So no matter where you are, you can get support. Give it a try. You can go over to source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial. You don't have to have the little iLock dongly thing anymore to use Source Connect Standard. And that's the one you want to check out, by the way, is Source Connect Standard. Go give it a try. Get it logged on. Start practicing with it so that day it comes when you do have a job. You can purchase the license outright. You can do it on a month-to-month -month basis, and you'll already know how to use it. You won't feel unprepared. So give it a try, and we thank Source Elements for their ongoing support for over three years now here at Source. Or, well, should we change the name to Source Elements VoiceOver Body Shop? Well, they haven't given us that much money. No, but thank you for yet. supporting us all these years, and we'll be right back. And we're back on VoiceOver Body Shop. You want to ask us a question? Throw it, email us at theguys at vobs.tv. Mm -hmm. And people wrote in. Let's talk tech, because that's what this show is all about. First question we have tonight is from Michael Kearns, and it says, near Seattle, Washington. All right. It says, in a recent episode, you talked about mics. We talk about them every episode. Main point I got was the mic isn't the real important thing. The important thing is proper setup and use of the mic. That's Absolutely. Right. Totally get it. But I still like the way I sound on different mics for different voices. He has more than one voice. Interesting. I had a chance to work with Cynthia, Cynthia Clank of Highland. He might be an engineer and recording other voices. That's true. That's possible. But he doesn't say that. He said, I had a chance to work with Cynthia Clank of Highland Recording Arts here near Seattle. And she let me put her Townsend Labs L22 through the line. Oh, through gosh. The, I the, do have one of those to test, by yes, the way. Yes, yeah, you're going to get to it One eventually. of these days. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it comes with a plug-in to emulate a bunch of classic mics like the U8, U47, the U87, the AKG C12, the Coles STC4030. These are all mic numbers. By switching between mic emulations after the take, I find it really easy to fine-tune the mic for the voice I'm going after. Have you take the, have you taken the L22 for a test drive yet? I have. That's the sphere. Yeah. It is the sphere. Yeah. And if so, what is your take on mic 
emulation. Well, I certainly have an opinion on yes. Um, the, the, here's the thing he says, I like the way I sound Mm -hmm. on this mic, but here's the problem, Mike, you don't hire you. We find this so many times that people like, I love the way I sound on this. But the fact of the matter is, unless you're really a trained engineer and Mike, you might be a trained engineer. Uh, it's not the mic that's going to get you the job. It's how you interpret the copy or how much you can sound like Christopher Walken. Wow, yeah. that's a terrible impression. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is you sound like you. The idea is to capture you as you exist, not to futz around with your voice and make it sound different. That said, it's fun to play with. It and is. I'll throw it to you with that. Oh, it's fun to play with. It's so cool. <laughs> well, uh, the L22 is like is an early days representation of kind of what I was leaning, what I was talking about is what might be coming this year. Right. So the L22, you can manually adjust the microphone's pickup pattern, the proximity effect. You can steer the microphone in different directions. And it's kind of fun for me as an engineer. I can be connected on somebody on Source Connect. I can remote desktop and see their computer screen, have someone read their recording, read their audio, and I can remotely dial in the microphone's pickup pattern until it sounds the best it can. And it's pretty freaking cool. I mean, it is, it is a cool gadget. Is it needed? Is it necessary in your own very own home studio? Not, not really. It's, it's not because in your own home studio, you've got complete control over those, those aspects. You can put the mic where it needs to go, but it, it is a cool, it is a definitely a cool thing. Um, the ability to emulate other microphones, huge for producers who do record a lot of other, a lot of voiceovers. Like if you are a producer and you have others coming in and you don't want to have to have 25 microphones on hand. To be able to change out mics a lot is pretty is pretty darn awesome. Right. So that that I can see. As a voice actor yourself, um, people do tend to have like two microphones commonly. One might be their promo sounding mic, which might be a Sennheiser 416 or something like that. And then they'll right. have a narrating mic or something a little bit less hyped sounding. And so to be able to change both mics, to be able to change mics without physically, physically reconnecting mics and just changing a setting, yeah. that's pretty compelling. Yeah. Um, I, I will do a review. I, I, I have one sitting that's been loaned to me by Thomas Machen. Right. I got it first and I let you have it. And it's, I am so sorry. It, is, it has been on a mic arm on my desk now for, I don't want to say how long. It's embarrassing. <laughs> but it's going to, I'm going to give it a full review before NAM show. That is my deadline. Before NAM show, which is in well, two better. weeks, I will have a review. Because once <laughs> NAM happens, I'm going to be inundated with new stuff to talk about. Yeah, lots lots of stuff, to, lots of toys to play with yeah. there. Yeah, I, I thought it was okay. It sounded like a mic. You know, I mean, if, if, if you like to play with it's mics, if you like, then fine, mic. go play. But going to play has nothing to do with being a professional voice actor, as far as I'm concerned. But that's just me. Horses for courses. That's right. Uh, Dave Wandelt asks... If you were setting up an analog mic preamp, for example, an Avalon 737, what would you feed that into as the next link in the chain? The line input of the audio interface, such as the Apollo Mark II. Is there an interface that you particularly like for this role? I'd like to minimize the amount of analog circuitry the signal passes through once it leaves the preamp. That's a good point. Be- yes. Here's, and of course, my immediate answer is, don't use the Avalon preamp. If you've got if you've got an Apollo Mark II, yeah. what on earth do you need an Avalon preamp for? Yeah. I think he has the Avalon. He's made the investment. He obviously likes the way he sounds on it. Now it's I call these pieces of technology Samson's hair. You know, once <laughs> okay. you have that thing, it's just like that's part of my sound. I can't get rid of it. But what is the he's asking about what ad converter it's what he's really asking like right. what what's the analog to digital i mean i have clients that plug it into a scarlet right does that make sense to do that not really i mean the scarlet is a hundred dollar interface you're plugging into another mic input it's not ideal right if you're using a two thousand dollar tube preamp maybe you should level up to an ad converter that's more up to up to par i mean the apollo again being a little overkill but it has a really good ad converter Right. Um, that's a good one. RME, maybe the baby face. Uh, that one's a high, very well respected and loved piece of gear for having really good quality. 
uh, analog digital conversion. But whatever it is, it should have a proper line input. Um, if you're using less expensive USB interfaces like the Scarlett, it doesn't have a line microphone switch inside it. When actually, you, it does. It actually doesn't. No, the line, it says line instrument. I know it does. That's trickery. <laughs> it's not okay. like on the Apollo when you switch to line, yeah. you'll actually will hear a click on the inside of the unit. It's, right. a, it's a relay. And it actually is switching the microphone signal out of the circuit. It's physically a different connection. And even the XLR inputs on the Apollo, there's a quarter inch in the middle. Like on the right. Scarlet, the quarter inch is still the same circuit. On the Apollo, the quarter inch is a line signal, and it's a completely different signal. So if you're a purist about it, you want to go through a line input. Does it matter? Are you going to hear the difference? No. <laughs> you're, you're, you're probably not going to hear the difference. You really, like a properly set up interface with the, with the Avalon is going to sound fine. So a couple ideas for you to try. All righty. Uh, Patrick Legreed of Phoenix, Arizona asks, he says, with the holidays just behind us, it brought out some, it, I, I, it brought about some travels and the opportunity to take my voiceover setup on the road. Hmm. Why would you want to do that? At home, I use Harlan Hogan's Portabooth Pro and have managed to get my recordings to a fairly good, though not quite studio quality level, mm -hmm. but good enough to get me a decent bit of work. In that case, it's good enough. And the Porter Booth Pro is, is excellent if you use it right. Uh, however, on the road, I'm struggling with what to do. I'd like to bring the booth along. And while it is portable, I'm not sure I want to lug it around with me. Hmm. That leaves me to create an on-the-fly recording space, usually with some combination of pillows, blankets, comforters, etc. In a closet, if available. Sounds awfully familiar. If that isn't feasible... I left including a note in my auditions that I'm on the road and not able to deliver the exact same quality that I would from home. That's reasonable well, enough. Okay, hoping they'll take my <laughs> word for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you have any suggestions as to a feasible, practical way to tackle auditions and voiceover work on the road? I don't want to miss out on opportunities, yet I'm not sure I want to lug around a bunch, the booth, a bunch of booth. Do I just suck it up and bring the booth? Is there a smaller, equally as effective option? For equipment on the side, I'm using a 416, a, sh a shotgun, and a Universal Apollo, mm -hmm. which connects to the MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. I don't bring my DBX286E due to space. Holy why, smokes. Why do you need a 286E? Especially if you have the Apollo. You do not need yeah, that to, thing. Really. Fighting, I can achieve a compatible a comparable result using plugins and processing. Thanks for any insights you can provide. I'm looking forward to the show and get more tips from both of and you. And yes, if you type three paragraphs, we will bore everybody and okay. read the whole thing. Yeah, John Bailey, John grab the microphone. <laughs> Come on. And the John, audience what you, cam. What do you do, John? Yeah. What do you do when you travel? Uh, I have been preaching the, 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 the praises of the MV88 from Shure. For a while. The little thing it plugs the, the, the in the bottom tiny of the microphone has yeah. been so freaking cool, man. Because you plug it into your iPad Pro. I can even record from my car with minimal background noise of a little, very little reverb. And I've been doing a lot of conventions where I don't have, I, I can't carry around a bunch of equipment. Yeah. But sometimes I'm going to need to go pop in a green room or, you know, find a quiet place and go record something. I can even do it from my iPhone. It's this big. It's not heavy like the app. The Apogee's still a little bit better, but it yeah. picks up almost too well when you're yeah. out and about. You yeah. know, this one actually really works. Comes with its own little tiny windscreen. It works really. That's great. Tascam, right? It's not a hundred percent. It's a sure. Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. It's, it's sure. not hundred percent the greatest mic. It does have a little issues with the uh, twisted wave. Sometimes. Well, it's this big. But it's that big, <laughs> and it plugs right into your lightning port. Dig it. And it's the what? One hundred and thirty-nine. One hundred something. It's, it's not that expensive at all. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, my opinion on the road. Well, tell you, you go first, and then I'll express my opinion on this. We know your opinion. No. Yeah, well, right. I've sat next to you for seven and a half years. I know everything you're going 70. to say. <laughs> Almost eight. It feels like 70. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, the the, the Portabooth Pro, all these portable things, yeah, I mean, they're, they're cool for people that like to have something predictable. You know, they right. want to have something they take with them that they set up each time, and they get a pretty predictable result out of it. That's what's cool about them. But... Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of folks that don't want to travel with these things, they're going to just make pillow forts and they're going to get creative. They're going to build a shrine. You got to, that's what you got to do. That, if it's not feasible for you to do that, 
you're going to be just doing audition quality probably from the back of your rental car. You know, I mean, that's the best thing you're probably going to get away with, you know, when you're out on the road. And, you know, you're probably doing auditions for jobs that, um, you know, you, 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 if, unless you're a pro, you've been doing this for 10, 15 years, the chances of you pulling off a fantastic audition in a strange environment with less than ideal equipment is so much less than if you're in the comfort of your own studio. Right. Right. So, I mean, do it because you like the challenge of it. Do it because you think it's interesting to try it. But if you're hanging your hat on this as a way to keep your career moving forward, it's it's probably not worth the effort. No. It probably isn't. I mean, uh, there's some folks that are wearing golden handcuffs. They have to be available. They have to get those promos and those affiliate commercial it's things. A t- uh, t- it's a tiny uh, little minority small, of people. It's a small group that need need that kind of availability. Yeah. So. I mean, to demonstrate that you can do that doesn't mean a whole lot if you can't deliver it. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be doing that stuff, you're getting hired and you're being requested and asked to do that kind of stuff. Yep. In which case... Yeah, you probably need to have that stuff for you, you know, when you go on the road. Yeah. But we've, I've, I've had voice over at Atlanta, VO Atlanta a couple of years ago. We ran this contest, show us a picture of your booth, show us your booths and, you know, in your hotel room. And people would show us these pictures of these voiceover shrines that they would build <laughs> and kept thinking, what happens when the, you know, the cleaning staff comes in and says, what is this religion that has taken over this hotel? And they've got all these, these shrines. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah. One of these days, yeah, they, you, the, the ironing board. You should and, bring a little, some kind of a little, you know, a little statuette that when right. you leave for the day, you put in there, so <laughs> right. they think you actually do. I freaking not draw a triangle with an eye on it in the bathroom mirror. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> ooh, you can really yeah. freak them out. But yeah, I mean, you, you build pillow forts, you use your car. I mean, that's that, that's a great one. Of course, I don't believe in you know, if I'm going on the road, I tell my clients. I'm on the road, and there's a reason I'm on the road, and it's not to be doing voice work. But you know what they say. You want to get voice work. Make plane reservations. Make a trip. Yeah, yeah take a it's, trip. Uh, <laughs> it's I mean, that's it's not just work. the way it works. It's just the, fa- <laughs> the, the fact that you reach out to tell somebody you're not available is them going, oh, yeah, Dan Leonard. <laughs> now they're going to start sending you work. <laughs> You're better off maybe not saying a thing. Just leave it. That's true. Well, I mean, some 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 of the companies I'm contracted with, they say, give us a week's notice. They want to know. I'm, I'm going to be out they of town. Know, yeah. you know, I'm going to write and I type it. But, yeah. um, but you know, I, I think that if you're on the road mm-hmm. trying to accommodate, the, you know, a client or just to do an audition, you know, if, if you're doing it on your iPhone, I mean, if you just you learn how to use your iPhone or as John was saying, use that little, you know, the Sure mic. Just use it right. The copy's right there. Use it in your car. They're more concerned about how well you read the copy mm-hmm. than they are about the audio quality because they know you're, if, especially if, if you're doing it to do it in another studio, yep. chances are, you know, they're, they're like, does this guy get the script? Mm-hmm. Do they see what we're trying to talk about? All right, bring yeah. them in. It yeah. doesn't matter that you're in a closet in some hotel in Pittsburgh. Yeah, audition quality is audition quality. I mean, don't try to achieve, don't try to duplicate what you're doing at home when you're on the road. You know, it's just, it's incredibly difficult to do. It's not impossible, really difficult. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I can build effects chains and processing stacks and Apollo presets that will, you know, what I've had people do is they've sent me audio they do do at their home studio. Right. And then I have them go on location and then I have them send me their audio from that location. If the acoustics aren't a dreadful mess, I can get pretty close you know we can do a pretty good job with it but if the acoustics are totally different there's not yet a plug-in that will make your walk-in closet studio at home sound like the corner of the the room in your hotel room right it's just not gonna just not a plug-in yet that can do that right maybe that's another prediction for this year we'll have that plug-in well maybe it's a prayer for this a year prayer for please bring year. us one of those yeah yeah um last All thing right. i just had J. Horace Black tagging on to the eGPU thing earlier. Mm-hmm. He said, um, any certain external GPU that you uh, recommend or are they all about the same? So yeah, an external GPU is sort of a generalized term. That's the mm-hmm. box, the card that goes in the box. That's the whole rig that that's the whole rig together. And um, there are companies now that are making a, a standalone unit that have the card, the box all in one. That's a different world from 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 what I'm doing. I, right. I can't make a sp- specific recommendation. It's just 
it's just not something I've ever personally needed. Right. So you're probably better off going on like newegg.com or something like that, where they talk about a lot of that kind of gear. Yeah. You know, in fact, you know what? Our good friend of ours has been on the show several times. Juan Carlos Most Bagnell. Magnell. Yeah. He works for New Egg now yeah, doing right. a talk show on the new, you know, at New Egg about gear. Right. Yeah. So go ask Juan Carlos Bagnell. Yeah. He'll know. That dude will know. Trust me. He go find Juan does. Carlos. Absolutely. Well, if you, again, if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, write to us. The guys at VOBS.TV. There it is right there underneath Mr. Widdham. Uh, and, uh, and you can ask the questions like we've been asked tonight, and we will expound as much as we can just about as it. we did. <laughs> and just as we did. And uh, making sure that you completely understand how it is that you, you go about having a home voiceover studio. And, and Dan, is yes. this the time where we show our lower third? It is. Can I go first now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If uh, you want to work with me, all you got to do is go to homevoiceoverstudio.com uh and there it is and uh i i work with you if if you're if you're not really knowledgeable if you really don't know how to start off with your home voiceover studio get in touch with me and i will teach you how to do it from you know like where are you going to put it how you're going to set it up you don't have to have windows and guitars hanging on the wall that's not a home voiceover studio it's your closet the more clothes the better things like that and uh, I'll show you how to do it, how to record properly. And if you already have an existing home studio and you're like, not sure of the sound, go to my w website. The bottom of the homepage is yeah. the, uh, specimen cup, specimen right? collection cup and you for click audio on only. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, I will analyze that for 25 bucks. And if you got a big problem, we'll work it out. We'll try and find out how to fix your audio. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a voiceover palace and you want to work with the guy who works with the big guys, you talk to Mr. Widow. And the way you find him is... You head over to georgethetech.com or if you like shorter URLs, georgethe.tech. Um, I, I do what Dan does as well, um, but I also do studio design, consultation. Uh, I help people all around the, the world as long as you can speak my language, which today is still just English. Good. Got some catching up to do. Um, <laughs> then uh, I can help you out anywhere. We can we we can work remotely, Source Connect, remote desktop, whatever you need. Uh, it's all available over there. I also do Twisted Wave stacks, processing presets, that kind of thing. That's self service. You send me the audio, I send back the processing, and off you go. So uh, go check it out over there. All right. So stay tuned here on Voiceover Body Shop. We'll be right back. <laughs> Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. We're here in the new studio, and we always like to have the best equipment. And you like to have the best equipment as a voice actor. We always say, get the get best work, get the best equipment. But the thing is, is where do you get this stuff? One of the best places to get it is voiceoveressentials.com, Harlan Hogan's website, where he has the best stuff and lots of specials running all the time. Go over to their website, voiceoveressentials.com, and check and see what he's got, but most importantly, his signature series stuff. Although I hear he is, they are selling like hotcakes, those mixer faces, that we've been talking about, George. They're people, oh, good. People love them. They're they're great units. He says he wrote to me today. He said I just used one on a, on a road trip. It worked great. Uh, I've used them on road trips. 
great little a great little interface and it can mean your mainline interface and you just throw it in your suitcase and there it is it is it, it's good enough to be the the one thing i i don't really recommend having a one thing because you want to have a backup right but it, it can it's capable sound quality is there the headphone amp is there it's got all the right. you know the right features right and multiple mics use it for podcasts and stuff like that but the other thing he wanted me to talk about was mm-hmm. the harlan hogan signature series <laughs> headphones <laughs> <laughs> version two version two which you really like i i do really like these these i you know the old ones had a, had an acquired taste sound i would have to say i mean they they were tuned to be uniquely for voiceover and by doing so they make they made them sound very different from other headphones so they took a little while to get used to these sound familiar i don't know how else to say it but they familiar? sound a little more it familiar. sounds like george they sound a little more familiar they sound more like music headphones a little bit more high fidelity but they still have the, the qualities of the other ones that I really liked. Um, these are actually a little more comfortable. They're made out of better quality materials. Detachable cord is really, really sweet to have. That means if you rip the cord out, if you trip on it, the cord can be plugged back in. You know, it's it's nice to have replaceability. Right, yeah. These are going to last a really long time. So um, check them out. If you tried the old ones and you weren't totally thrilled, I'd say give these a shot. You might you might be very pleasantly surprised. I, you know, I'm using them. They're they're great headphones. The best place to get them, the only place you can get them, is VoiceOverEssentials.com. And the way you get there is you go to the bottom of our homepage. If you're all watching on our homepage, go down to the bottom of the homepage, click on that picture of Harlan Hogan, at least the back of Harlan Hogan, talking into his Porta Booth Pro, and it will take you right there and buy all his stuff. It'll make him happy. It'll make us happy. But most important, it will make you happy Mm -hmm. thanks for being our sponsor for eight years harlan and we hope you'll be with us for eight more god i hope we're here for eight more years we'll be right back possible now that was a great show this new format's going to be interesting Mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes working out the kinks tonight yeah live on the air (laughs) that's (laughs) the way it goes on january 21st 2019 rolls by just like that uh, we will, uh, bring Larry Davison here. Who's Fantastic. A funny guy. He's just like John Bailey, just a great, uh, mimic and amazing a, improviser and a great improviser yeah. and, a, and a fun guy. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week. We've got a lot of those familiar names cause they subscribe like Cherry C H Reynolds. We've got, uh, why are these all in the donors area? Sorry about that. Okay. And you, Andrew Kaufman, Karen Cunningham, yeah, Karen, Karen O'Brien. Karen O'Brien um, yes. We've got coming down the list here, Don Griffith. Thank you, Don. He's a subscriber. Martha Kahn. Martha. Shana, Shana Pennington Baird, which we now know the say her name, how to say her name <laughs> since she's been on the show. Uh, good old Uncle Roy from Antland Productions. Joseph Valtanetti. Thank you, Joseph. Diana Bertzel. Uh, Stephanie Sutherland. And to round it out, Patty Gibbons, Brian Page. We're pretty much reading everybody's everybody's that's donated in the last month because, well, we haven't been on in almost a month. Uh, Amanda Fellows and George Whittem Sr. My dad, <laughs> George Whittem Sr., who every time I see him says, I can't figure out how to cancel my donations. Darn. <laughs> well. <laughs> anyway, thanks, everybody. We really appreciate your supporting us along the way. It's been great. Absolutely. Hey, you know, we've, we've got the, the VOBS living room here, but if you'd like to show us your booth, show us your booths. Yeah, we want your booth back here. Absolutely. Uh, and send it to us in landscape, not portrait. Right, landscape. Uh, show us what your studio's like, what, if you, what you put into it, and we'll be in front of it, which would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Send them to the guys at VOBS.TV, mm-hmm. and we'll be happy to get it on here. Uh, if you need help with your home studio, you can talk to George at georgethetech.com. That's where you can find me. And Dan is available over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Get over there. Well, we can help you. We know what's going on. Uh, we're now on at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 Eastern, and whatever time it is in Newfoundland, uh, (laughs) doing it an hour early so you guys on the East Coast can, uh, have a little bit more time with your families, right. that sort of thing. And uh, But if you'd like to be in the studio here at 5 o'clock on a 
an alternate Monday. We're going to be on every other Monday now. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know if you're going to be in town or if you're here in L.A. And write to us again at the guys at VOBS.TV and put in the subject line, audience. Mm -hmm. And that will allow us to know that you're going to be here. As you saw, we have a bit, quite a bit more room now for folks to be in here. It's Absolutely. very comfortable. So come right. on in. Absolutely. Well, we'd like to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to go go. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Um, all still sponsoring the show in 2019. Thank absolutely. You, everybody. They, they know where the good stuff is. Absolutely. As do you guys. Uh, of course, we'd like to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Our producer, Catherine Curtin, for getting us Tara Strong and all these great guests yeah. we've got lined up. Jack Daniel on chat room duty and on YouTube. And our amazing technical director who did an amazing job tonight. Oh. We're not worthy. Sue Merlino. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, guys, you know, it's all about how good you sound. And that's mostly because you sound the way you are. And that's the most important thing. But if it sounds right. It is good. That's right. And it sounds right. And you're right. I'm right. That's right. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it for us tonight on Voice Over Body Shop. We'll see you on the 21st with Larry Davis. And uh, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or VO BS. Take care, guys. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Um, well, this morning, you know, I get up every morning and I check a bunch of things. First, I grab my phone, kiss my wife good morning, mm -hmm. but and, and then grab my phone. Oh, reverse the order. Yeah. Right? Reverse, yeah. Got to do the important. Girlfriends, wives. Yes. Yeah, right. We exactly. Kiss you first. Then we grab the phone. That's right. It's like, I made it to another morning. All right. Um, and, uh, I, I start checking my email to see what am I supposed to do today? 
Uh, and, um, you know, you know, there's Corvo's blog, which I have to read every morning because it's like amazing the stuff that he writes every night. And I check to see, do I have any appointments today? Mm-hmm. But this morning there was this really lengthy discussion about someone and she knows who she is, uh, was moving or was having trouble with her studio and was getting some new equipment. And she asked the, the question. question, you knew exactly what I was going to say. What mic should I get that's going to be better than what I have? Mm-hmm. And I think she had a Rode NT1A. And okay. I'm thinking, okay. what's wrong with that? It's a bright mic, but it sounds fine. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, what I usually say is, you know, what's the best mic? The one you usually have, mm-hmm. unless you're using some really cheapo USB mic mm-hmm. or something under 100 bucks. You know, there's, there's this, this null zone. Anything under 100 bucks. They suck. I'll tell you what. Yeah, okay. I'm going to interject. There's okay. one sub hundred dollar mic yeah. that always surprises me. Okay, which one's that? The MXL 990. 990. Yeah, that's a, that's that a good one. That one is an outlier. It's a mutant, an anomaly. <laughs> but and, overall, and really fat too. Yes, right? but overall, definitely avoid most sub hundred dollar yeah. mics. I know a lot of people using the 990. You know, it's surprisingly decent. And, and if it works for you, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the point that we'll probably eventually get to at the end of this discussion. There's a point. There is a point. <laughs> oh, There's boy. There's always a point to these discussions. I thought it was just a rant. Yeah. No. Well, okay. the rant was what went on in this Facebook yeah. um, thread of yeah. everybody chiming in and saying, you know, I use this and it makes me sound great. No, you should use this. No, you should use that. You should No, this is the one you got to use. <laughs> and, oh, and then there's sibilance. And mm-hmm. then a couple of our friends tuned in and were saying things like, no. You know, mm-hmm. read this article on how to choose a microphone. No, it's how you use the microphone. No, it's this. No, Look it's this that. Look at chart. Look at the frequency response curve charts. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. All right. Now, you may argue with me on this. I mean, we've, we've not had this argument. We talk about it, and I think you're either nice to me about it or... I'll just, I'll just supply facts. Okay, that works better. Um, <laughs> I, no, I have no. found, yeah. and, and you and I have done literally a thousand studios or more. Uh, most people who chime in on these forums are experts in one studio, their own. And one voice. And and one voice, their voice. So to say, this one makes you sibilant, this one makes you this, this one does this, that one does that, is utterly irrelevant. Yeah. (laughs) Because every, every voice is different, every room is different, and the way a a microphone responds to you and that environment is different. What I found, we've been able to break it down to basically three things. The, qu- the quality of your audio for a home studio is, number one, the acoustical um, environment in which you record. Right, right. It's got to be prevent sound from coming in, mm-hmm. and it's got to prevent sound from bouncing around, around, right. around, around. <laughs> and... And, and that's, that in itself is a science. I mean, you wrote a paper on it and presented it at NAB. I mean, that's something you know about. <clears throat> and I read that paper, so now I know They about approved it. it, so I'm now approved. Yeah, that's right. So the, the point being that acoustics, in our mind, is number one. You have to have the right acoustical environment in which to record. Number two is mic technique. Mm-hmm. If you have a great mic. And how. If you have a fantastic mic. I think it's far more important that you understand how to use that microphone. For example, here's, here's my 416, which is, you know, I, this is my, aside from this being our That's studio. That's your day-to-day working This is my mic, day-to-day, right? day-to-day microphone. How do you use a 416? Well, there's a number of different ways you can use it, but you've got to know what those ways are and when to use it that particular way. Right. Uh, you know, for example, if I'm just recording myself, you stand off a 416 a lot farther than other mics because it's a video mic. It captures you in a much more realistic way, which is why all the big studios in L.A. are now using 416s. You know, we've been in the studios. Oh, yeah, we use the 416. If you're doing promo stuff, which probably less than one half of 1% of you are doing, right. you, you address it directly on with, with a pop screen. Yeah. So... You know, that's important with mic technique. But, you know, here we have the Harlan Hogan VO1A, which, by the way, and, you know, they are a sponsor. But 
this microphone is at a great price point. It's like 300 bucks mm -hmm. and it's designed for voiceover. Unlike every other piece of equipment on the face of the earth that we are, are adapting for use in voiceover. It's all designed for recording music. Mm -hmm. And if you use it right, if you're at the right distance from it, if you don't talk directly into the diaphragm, if you don't pop the heck out of it because you're talking straight into it. Exactly. If you if you have it set right at eye level, you can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers all day long, and it's not gonna you're not gonna get any plosives. If you don't talk into the back of it by mistake. Or the side of it, or off axis. Or the end of it. <laughs> yeah. How many times do we get that? Oh, you know, send me a picture. What does it sound like? Um yeah. you know you're talking into the top of the mic. <laughs> you know, or, or talking into the wrong side. I'm like, yeah. turn it around. Yeah. Look at the logo. Oh, mm -hmm. not to make you guys sound silly or less, you know, it's, it's ignorance more than anything else. A lot of people get into this and they're like, I'm, I don't understand the technology. Turn it around, understand the physics of the microphone and how to use it properly. Start with a mic you can afford. Right. If, was there a third thing you were getting to? Oh, yes. I cut you off? Sorry. <laughs> proper microphone input levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Modulation, controlling the modulation and the input onto your computer is vital. That if you if it's too loud you're going to get distortion. If it's too quiet, which we see probably more often than not, it's if you get little tiny, you know, waveforms and then every well, I could just normalize it. Well, not only does it make your, you know, your voice louder, it makes all any noise that's in there much louder and it's not a good thing. If you record clean Using proper mic technique and the proper acoustical environment and set your levels right, it should be fine. And so all these guys, very few women, you know, and the women that listen to these guys, you know, who mm -hmm. a lot of these geeky guys saying, well, I've got all this stuff and I got all this stuff and I've got a DBX 286 and it, there is no piece of, I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, so I'm, I'm probably repeating <laughs> now myself. Now you're officially ranting. So. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there is no piece of equipment and no microphone out there that exists on the face of God's green earth that will change the way you interpret copy. It's up here, not here. Mr. Whittem? You finished? Hey, for the time being. <laughs> cool down now. Okay. <laughs> You're a fan. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it, it is true. I, um, I did see an interesting, because there was an, a very similar sort of post on Maxine Dunn's uh, Facebook Mm -hmm. last week because she she just posted the question i use this mic what do you use you know and there was a lot of interesting stuff on there i mean a lot of it's stuff i expected and mm -hmm. totally expected to see um one thing was a piece of information posted by a guy named greg hauser who's a pretty techie guy he yeah. really loves he, he, mike he's a real gear. geek yeah. yeah he really loves this stuff but he found a chart um and uh if you're patient while the guests are on i'll find a link to it and post it um that showed a grid of bright to dark. And so it was bright mics at the top, dark ones at the bottom. And then it had, uh, uh, what was it? Transparent or accurate, maybe is the word. On one side, colored or not so accurate on the other. Right. So this is sort of like the four axis grid that you can look at mics on. And it was, it had, oh man, probably 75 mics on that chart. Right. It's a lot to look at. Um, but what it tells you is that mics do have certain colorations. Some are more colored, meaning they're not accurate. Some are extremely transparent, totally accurate. But what's funny is you think a mic that's completely transparent, absolutely dead accurate, like a measurement microphone, would be the right one. But none of us are using one of those. So it's kind of funny. We're looking for a mic that captures you as you, but captures you as you with a certain amount of something, a little bit of EQ, there's something on there that makes it sound a little bit different. And that's the thing that everybody's trying to figure out, right? And the point we're making is whatever the mic you buy, as long as it's low noise, it's clean and accurate, you have your room tuned, we can tweak that stuff in post. Th that's what the producer's gonna do anyway. Not your job. Right, they're gonna, they're gonna take your audio the way you send it to them, and they're gonna deal with little issues here and there with a little bit of sibilance, maybe a little bit of low-end thickness or heaviness. Whatever it is, they're going to decide how to shape the sound, the EQ. 
Or, or if you really want to have sound that you send out that sounds as finished as possible for jobs that where they're not going to do the post and you have to supply ready for air audio, then having a stack or a rack or something built is the way to go, which is something I do, by the way. Dan, have you started getting into that stuff yet? Making racks and stacks and all that stuff? Occasionally. Yeah. I, you know, On a case I'm, by case basis. Yeah. I mean, with some of the clients you work with who have specific needs and stuff like that, you, I, they, I, you, know, you can do that. Sometimes if someone has an anomaly or some minor adjustment, I will usually Any do that. Any Q curve, Yeah, maybe? just something just to take something out or yeah. some air handling or something. You can, you can sh- do very minor things. The thing yeah. is, is when you send your audio out, again, as George said, you're sending it to an engineer who knows how to work with it. You hope. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've, I've worked with a bunch of videographers who are like, ah, we'll just, yeah. Yeah, we can do this with it. Like, yeah. Hey, what are you doing to my voice? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's important to do as little as possible in any processing that you do is for minor little corrections. Corrections. In, yeah, I, in the studio. I call it corrective EQ. Yeah. If you're doing auditions for a very specific genre, I will occasionally do some interesting things with the EQ. To make it sound more like a finished product, but usually I don't. Um, so, but just to be really general here, okay. If you have a bright mic, bright voice, very sibilant and very you know upper register, you don't want a mic that's very very bright. Yeah. You want a mic that's more accurate or flat or even dark to right. counteract it. But there's such, and such vice versa. subtle differences in this. I know these things are so. You look at a chart like this, and you're going to think, whoa, look at the range. Well, these are shades of mauve. Right. These differences. So, anyways, um, don't go, don't overthink it. And if you don't, don't trust your choice, it. pick two mics. Don't do more than two. And don't test it in the store with a pair of headphones. Right. Get two mics, bring them home, and keep one. But don't. More- Decision by, what's it, paralysis by decision? Or what's the thing? If you have too many options, you'll never decide. Something like that. Yeah. Exactly. The bottom line is, is that you don't hire you. You got to let somebody who understands what it's supposed to sound like, hear it and make a judgment as to, well, that might work for you. This might not. That sort of thing. Someone whose ears you trust and that you also trust how they monitor. That's really important. I know two guys who do that. Really? You're one of them. And how do they get a hold of you and have them listen to their audio? (laughs) I'm available over at georgethetech.com. When I tell Google Voice to translate that into George, and I say George V Tech, <laughs> it comes out as George V Tech. If I say George, it's George the Tech, it comes out as Georgia Tech. Whatever the case, it's George the Tech. dot com. Where do they find you, Dan? They can find me at homevoiceoverstudio.com. dot com, and uh, you know I may have to start charging for the for the the specimen collection cup. I mean, you're getting loaded up, huh? You're getting the, backed up. A lot of people are, are leaving over, lots of, <laughs> yes, it is overfloweth. <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> but you can go there right now, uh, and drop a piece of your audio in the specimen collection cup at home voiceover and I'll give it a listen and we'll decide. Yeah. Let the guys that have designed thousands of studios and know what it's supposed to sound like do that. Okay. I think that's enough rant. We, we have our guests waiting. We're running a little long. We yep. did have a question from Gerard McGuire saying, when tracking down subtle distortion, kind of subtle sizzle on certain words in my audio chain, what's the most likely culprit? Is it the mic? Is it the mic cable? Is it the USB cable interface? Is it the software? Is it the computer? Did I leave anything out? Mic preamp? I um, say it's none of those. To me, it sounds like mic technique and perhaps mic matching. It could be. It could be. I I have heard weird sizzly stuff on when you're when you're using a really bad preamp or a really cheap or, interface. Or a cheap mic. <laughs> you know, sometimes it, a mic can do it. Um, us trying to troubleshoot that without closely listening to the audio probably not going to get too far. So, right. Dan's uh, specimen cup, my sound check. That's the way to go with that, Gerard. We will really be able to get get to the bottom of this. Send when when you send in the audio to either of us or both of us. Send along your gear list, too, so we understand and we can help you better with it.